Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of our CR startup series, Developing a Business Model Canvas for Your ABA uh, Startup Practice. I am your host, uh, Gabriel Laurie. A little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a BCBA. I've been in the field of behavior analysis for about 13 years. Uh, along with my background in behavior analysis, I also have a background in business. Um, that background actually spans about 16 years approximately. Um, and over the course of those 16 years, I've supported the business development of companies uh, in a few different areas. And uh, those include ABA startup companies. All right. All right. As a reminder, the information uh, contained in this presentation does not constitute uh, legal or clinical advice. Any legal decisions you may need to make should always be consulted with an attorney. All right. So let's talk about the agenda for today. Uh, we're going to go over what is a business model canvas. Uh, we're going to go over identifying key needs, value propositions, uh, customer relationships, channels, customer segments, cost structure, revenue streams, and then we're going to close it out with a brief Q&A. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what is a business model canvas? Uh, this is for those of you that are not familiar with it. Uh, a business model canvas is a single page template uh, that contains nine key, nine key components and offers a simplistic outline uh, of goals and objectives for a business. All right. So think of it as like an outline uh, on a single page that you're able to, to look at all at once because business models can be very, if you're not familiar with them, they can be very intimidating, especially for, for people that have never uh, been in the business area. So business model canvases are offer a very simplistic view of everything. And it just kind of helps you keep in uh, everything in, 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 a, in a very simple uh, type of view. All right. This is what it looks like in case you're not familiar what it looks like at all. Um, you can pick these out online. Uh, it's very simple to, to take a look at them. A quick Google search, you'll, you'll take a look at them and see what they actually uh, look like. All right. So let's dive right in. Identifying key partners. All right. One important question to ask is who are your key partners all right, in your business? Is it other ABA businesses? Is it universities? Is it other organizations? Uh, like, for example, if you're if you're serving the IDD population, are there other organizations within that, uh, you know, that realm that that are your key partners? OK, uh, next, how are you recruiting staff and clients? This is an important question to ask yourself. Um, are you using universities for recruiting staff? For example, do you have a funneling system, perhaps where you go and you talk to uh, maybe ABA uh, classes or, or anything like that, that you're going to going to try to recruit RBTs through there. Um, how about your clients? Are you going to local community events? Are you going to conferences? Um, think about these things. How are you going to recruit uh, your staff and your clients? All right. Which key resources are we acquiring from, from our partners? So what are you gaining from the partnership? So think about that. Not only do you have to think about what kind of partners you have or who are your partners, but what are you acquiring from them? Are you acquiring, for example, are you know are they helping you gain personnel, referrals for clients, uh, things like that? Things things that you you should really start to think about. All right. So which key activities do your partners perform? All right. Are they helping you uh, to advertise your company? Are you are they helping to help funnel in uh, new staff? Uh, you know things like that. What what are they actually uh, performing? Like what activities do they do they perform? All right. So next, identifying the key activities. So what, what key activities do our, our value propositions uh, require? All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about value props uh, in a little bit. But what basically what you want to ask yourself is what do we need in order to deliver on our value proposition? So some uh, examples of this can be uh, you, know, you need expertise in behavior analysis. If you're, per, if you're providing clinical therapy, you need to have expertise. So this is something that you're going to require, right? Uh, perhaps you also want to require customer service skills you know, to maintain uh, your clients and to, to make sure that your business is running the way that you uh, see fit. Uh, next, what are your distribution channels? Uh, these can be like, you know, it, uh, you, got, you got to think about how are you delivering your services? Is it in home? Is it in clinic? If you're, if you're providing ABA therapy, um, is it virtually? 
uh, these are your channels. This, this is how you're distributing your, your services. Uh, think about your client relationships. What do what your client relationships look like? Um, how are you going to acquire your clients, uh, like those relationships, and how are you going to maintain them? Okay, uh, that takes a little bit of work. So you got to kind of start thinking about that as well. Uh, one important thing here, too, is revenue streams. What products and services are you going to offer? Um, is it just ABA therapy, for example, or are there other, uh, other services you're going to offer as well? Uh, think about how the revenue is going to come into your business, right? And the different services that you might, uh, you, you might have. Next, identifying key resources. Um, so what key resources do your value propositions require? Do they require a certain number of staff, locations? Like, for example, do you think that you're going to need maybe perhaps one BCBA, uh, you know, a couple RBTs? Do you need an office admin? Think about that. Like, what is that going to look like? Um, and what are your distribution channels for your key resources? Like, in other words, how are you delivering these things, uh, the, your, your products and services? So are you delivering them through your RBTs, your BCBAs, your BCABAs? How are you delivering on this? Um, what do your customer and client relationships require? Do they require quality services? Hopefully, right? Um, do they require your attention, special attention, perhaps superior outcomes? I think that you know us being BCBAs and even in the in the ABA space, we want to we want to deliver superior outcomes. Think about that. Is it open communication? Sometimes uh, other practices may not have open communication. Do you want to deliver on that? Next, um, on, on the key re resources side of things, the revenue streams. We're looking to see, like, how are, how are they contributing to your revenue streams? Is it through ABA? Is it OT? Is it speech? Do you have other revenue streams that you want to incorporate eventually? You may not have those answers right now, but maybe you want to start thinking about that, maybe long term. Okay. Next, value propositions. This is what we were just talking about a little while ago. So, what value do you deliver to your client? Like, in other words, you want to think about why should the client choose your business over every other ABA business, perhaps in your area? Uh, you want to look at the differentiators. Like, what is it that makes you different to your competitors? Uh, because there's a lot of clinics out there. There's a lot of providers out there. What makes you different? What sets you apart? What is your mission for, versus another company? Uh, one thing to consider, what are you helping to solve? A lot of uh, clinics, ABA therapy, they have a lot of the, the, the same things that we're trying to solve. But be specific. What is it that you particularly offer? Is it client independence? Is it daily living skills? Is it all of that? Is it more than one thing? Okay. Uh, next, what bundles of products and services are you offering to each customer segment? All right. We don't look at our clients as in terms of customers, right? So we can probably change that and say, maybe you know, what, what are our what are our clients, uh, you know, need? If if you're serve if you're uh, serving, uh, you know, toddlers versus adults, you know, those are different needs. Those are different skill sets that you want to offer. Uh, what does that look like? Uh, one important thing here too to always consider is what's the minimum viable product? What's your MVP, as they like to call it? What that means is basically what is the bare minimum that is required in order to deliver on your services and run your business? Think about it like this. In order for me to run my business as a BCBA and I own my own business, I need one BCBA. And that BCBA could be you. It could be just by yourself. That is the minimum thing that you need uh, in order to run your business. Now, that may look different for any of you. It, it may be an RBT and a BCBA. It may, it may be office staff. It may, whatever that is, think about it. Think about what it's going to take at the bare minimum to run the business. Okay. Next, customer relationships. How do you acquire, how do you keep and grow your customer relation uh, or your, your, your clients, right? Um, you want to start thinking about that. Like if you're, if you're acquiring your clients, how are you acquiring them? How are you going to keep them from going to another, uh, you know, another clinic or another, another company? Um, how are you going to grow your clients? Right. We have ethical, uh, you know, uh, things that we need to keep in mind in, in terms of in, in ABA, right. We don't want to just hold on to them for the sake of holding on to them, but if they're going to grow along with you, perhaps you want to start thinking about that too. Like how are, you know, as your client uh, grows and moves down their timeline, 
are you going to be able to keep them? Maybe not. I mean, that might not be something that's there, but you want to start thinking about that. All right. Which uh, client relationships have you already established? Uh, this could be something that you you might already have clients that you're already considering. Maybe you are already very active in the, your local community. Uh, you may have already a bunch of interest uh, in, in you starting your own company. That may be something for you. But have you already established those? Think, think about that. Like, you know, think about how that's going to incorporate into your business. Uh, think about how they're going to be integrated into the rest of your business model, right? So are you going to have other services that perhaps uh, some of your clients are going to be able to utilize and they're going to be able to take advantage of? Things that you, you know, in your particular area of expertise that you're going to be able to offer. Perhaps you, you even have, um, you know, other experts in your in your business that you're planning on incorporating that you're going to be, they're going to be a part of your business model. Think about that as well. What are your channels here? Through which channels do you do your clients uh, want to be reached? All right. So you got to think about some of your clients here. These are sensitive, uh, you know, clients that you have. You want to think about how you're going to reach them. Nobody likes to be bombarded by you know, certain types of things. They prefer maybe email, social media, word of mouth. How is it that you're going to reach them? All right. And how do they want to be reached? Another thing to consider here is how do other companies reach them now? Um, look at your competitors. And we're going to talk about this in the next episode about uh, market research and looking at what other companies are doing, but how are other companies right now, how are they reaching them? Are they active in the community? Are they going to local, uh, you know, maybe uh, local walks, uh, local activities, uh, you know, events? Think about that. Like, how are they reaching them? Is it through word of mouth only? Think about that. Next, which ones work best, right? Is it, is it social media? Is it, um, is it something else? Is it word of mouth? Whatever that is, think about those things. And this is something that you may not have the answers to right now, but as you progress, you'll figure this out. You'll start to see which works and what, what works and what does not work. Um, which ones are most cost efficient, right? If you want to put it in real plain terms, which customer acquisition method is successful while requiring the least amount of capital? So in other words, What's the most cost efficient way to gain customers or gain clients, right? You want to figure that out. Um, as, as for, for any business owner, this is a very important thing because you want to reduce your, your, your costs while being able to provide as much services as possible. All right, next, customer segments. We, we don't look at, like, once again, we don't look at um, our clients as customers, but at the end of the day, they, they are supporting our businesses, which allows us to support them in turn, right? So for whom are we creating value? You gotta think about who is your who is your client? Uh, like who is the, your ideal client? Who are you creating the value for? Is it the IDD population? Is it someone else? Think about that. Who are your most important clients? This sounds very insensitive. It's not it's as insensitive as it sounds. You gotta think about what are your strengths? What is your most important client? The one that you're trying to serve? What is aligned with your company mission? This is something that you should really consider, right? What are your customer archetypes? Again, we're looking at it in terms of customers because this is a business model canvas, but in our, in our area, we're looking at clients. What do they look like? Are we looking at um, you know serving uh, populations that are adults, perhaps eighteen and older? Are they you know toddlers? Do we have a specific area that we can really focus in on? But what do they look like? This is very important for a business. You want to make sure that you're look, looking at or looking for specific clients that you're able to serve, right? So what do that what does that look like for you? All right, revenue streams. What value are you are your cust or your clients willing to pay for? Um, is it particular outcomes? You know, uh, is it superior outcomes like you want? You know, for your for your company, what are they looking for? What are they currently paying for? Right. So, what is it that you know uh, other uh, companies are 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 charging at the moment? Like, what are they what are they looking uh, to pay for for these types of services? You want to also consider what is your revenue model going to look like? How are you going to be how are you going to plan to become profitable? Uh, you want to be specific. Like, you know, you may not have all of the answers right away, but start to come up with some of these, um, you know, answers in your head at least and, and jot these down. It's very important to jot these down. What is it going to cost to run your business? Um, how much are you going to charge? 
What are your margins? You got to start thinking about these kinds of things. They don't really teach a lot of this stuff for us uh, clinicians in, in, in school, but it's important for us if we're going to go into the business area to really focus in on these things because this is very important. So what are your pricing tactics? This kind of relates to your revenue model. What are each, if you're providing more than one service, what is that going to cost? Uh, you really want to focus in on that as well. And as, as you deal with payers, that's going to vary from time, you know, from payer to payer, perhaps, or from service to service. You really want to start to think about these things. Next, your cost structure. So what are the most important costs inherent to your business model? So this might be training new staff like RBTs. This might be paying rent if you're center-based. These are certain things that are going to be uh, you have to consider. So what's what's the uh, the most important costs that are that are important to your business? Um, what which key resources are are most expensive? Uh, the next you know you want to you want to uh, consider is it is it your training of your RBTs? Is that going to be a very expensive tool for you uh, or or a process for you? Uh, you want to think about that. Which key activities? So now we're looking at the actions, right? The activities, uh, which are most expensive. Uh, this could also be training uh, staff too. Uh, sometimes you might have a lot of turnover and that could be very costly. Uh, I know some businesses have had, you know, some turnover over the course of years and that that provides a, a, a lot of cost for them to try to train new staff and try to replace staff. They have to put uh, staff, uh, maybe move them from certain areas to go and help train new staff. This can be very costly. All right. So consider that as well. All right. Um, so just a reminder here for software purposes, you know, if you're ever going to start uh, when, when you're going to start your business, software is a very important tool in, in along that process. Consider CR Essentials. CR Essentials is something that's very important uh, to, to new businesses. It can really help out. It's an all-in-one solution that's designed specifically for startups and small ABA companies. All right, CR Essentials offers fast and uh, easy onboarding that's set up with personalized support and practice management, management for all your data collection needs. So give it a shot. You have nothing to lose. Um, and you um, know our our team is more than willing to to help you find out more information on that. All right. So before we go over the questions, uh, before be sure to check out our our next episode in the series. It's going to be titled "Marketing and Competitor Research Tips for ABA Startups." Uh, your host, which is yours truly. Uh, will give BCBA starting their own pra ABA practice, marketing com and competitor research uh, tips, including where to start your competitor research, understanding competitors, understanding the market need in your area, building a website and SEO, and much more. As a bonus, attendees will also receive our strategic guide to marketing your ABA practice, so be sure to reserve your spot today. Uh, one last reminder, we will be sending out the recording of this episode in about two to three business days. Uh, we'll also be sending everyone a free checklist for ABA startup success. All right. So uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to open it up for questions. And uh, I see that we actually have our first question here. Uh, the first question that I'm seeing here is, do business model canvases, are they able to change? Uh, I think what that means is, are they able to change over time? Like, in other words, if you if you create a, a business model canvas, is it able to change? Question to that is absolutely. Uh, business model canvases and even business plans should be somewhat fluid. You should be able to change as you go along. Because thing is, like we, when we went over this presentation, there are certain things you may not have answers to right away. You're going to figure these things out as you go along. Uh, but there are also things that change. You learn a little bit as you as you grow and as you start to scale. So perfectly uh, great question to ask. And uh, it's absolutely uh, in my in my view, it's essential to be able to adapt and, and remain uh, fluid with a business model canvas. OK, let's take a look at some of the other questions that I've rolled in. All right. Uh, one question here we have. I know this is a very general question with a wide range of answers, but how long does it take for a new small ABA uh, company to start being profitable? Actually, that's a uh, that's a great question. Actually, I think um, well, I think we're 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 going to take care of that actually on the back end here. 
Uh, so rest assured, your question is going to be answered here. All right. Um, next question here. How do you suggest market uh, to gain first clients? Is that something you can help with? Okay. All right. So I think that this question is in regards to marketing to gain your first clients. Uh, that's something, I mean, I am not a marketing expert, if that's what you're asking. Um, I have done marketing plans in the past uh, for ABA uh, companies before. Um, I would, you know, seriously, I, I would actually consider uh, joining our next episode where we're going to talk about this a little bit more in further, further detail, how to get that ball rolling with your marketing campaigns, how to really uh, investigate and look into uh, your marketing. So, I would highly encourage you join the next episode. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. That's not a very uh, straightforward answer, I know, uh, but it's not an easy question to answer either. Uh, there's a lot to that. So join our next episode. We'll talk a little bit about that. Okay. Um, next question. Let's see. What is the purpose of a business model uh, canvas? Is it for investors? Uh, great question. Business model canvas is actually, it can serve for, I guess you could you could do it for investors, but it's really not meant for investors. It's more meant for the individual, the ABA business owner uh, or the business owner in general. It doesn't even have to be an ABA, but what it is, is, it, is a, it's an outline. It's meant to serve as a guide. As you go along, you're going to look at all your objectives, your goals for the business, and you want to make sure that you're following along that plan, right? There's that old saying, if you if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. That, that, that kind of falls in line with that business plan. Business model canvases are a business plan, but it's a more condensed version. It's a more simplistic view. So it helps you guide uh, yourself along at your business journey. So it's not necessarily for investors. I think it's more for the business owners or any of the stakeholders that are involved in the business, which can be investors. But in my view, it's more, more for the business owners. All right. Um, next question. What is your opinion on in-network versus out-of-network considering all that comes with that? I think that that's more geared towards uh, insurances, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm not really you know, uh, an expert when it comes to uh, payers, if that's what you're regarding there. Uh, I see our team is kind of handling uh, that question there too. Perhaps they have a little bit more knowledge on that area, but I don't feel comfortable quite answering that one uh, just in case, but, you know, I, I would highly recommend investigating and checking that out with uh, certain payers, uh, perhaps peers as well. Um, when it comes to, okay, uh, when registering the company, under what business, uh, what type of business should you register? I think that you're you're um, referring to perhaps LLCs or INCs, things like that. That's a good question. Um, that's more of a legal question, in my opinion, because there are some uh, pros and cons to a lot of them. I've seen uh, where companies will start off as an LLC, some start as an INC. That's kind of a more personalized question. I would highly recommend. Uh, seeking some legal advice on that, uh, because there are some pros and cons to that. All right. Okay, so I see, uh, I, I don't think there are any other questions. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, well, oh, I'm sorry, I think we have one more just popped in here. Uh, can you change uh, if LLC to INC? Um, not sure about that, to be honest, and I, I would actually defer that again to probably more of a legal question uh, on that. So, uh, but great question, nonetheless. All right. Well, that's all the time that we have today. Uh, please uh, feel free to join. Let me see. Hold on one more second, I think. I just want to thank you all for joining me. Uh, today. If you have time, please fill out uh, the brief survey that's going to appear after the webinar concludes. We love hearing your feedback. It helps us to improve on future web webinars. Uh, once again, we're going to have another uh, episode three, so please uh, catch that if you have the time. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.